Alright, in this video we're going to look at some examples of surface integrals for surfaces defined by an explicit function. So notice when you read this problem that it doesn't actually say anything about a surface integral. You have to kind of think through the problem to recognize that it is a surface integral. So we're given a temperature function that gives a temperature at any point x, y, z, and we are supposed to find the average temperature, so that is going to be the average value of the function on a portion of a plane, so on a particular surface. So we are going to find the average value of this temperature function, so T bar is going to be the sum of the temperature function, so that's what our definite integral represents, on the surface divided by the size of the surface, so in this case that would be the surface area of our surface S, and we might be able to just write down the surface area if it happens to be a surface that we know the surface area of. If not, we could just use a surface integral to calculate that, so integral over the surface S of D sigma, so we're just adding up all those little surface area pieces. So we really have two surface integrals to do in this problem, and there's a lot of equations in this problem too, and so one thing that's really important about surface integrals is to be clear about what is the function you're integrating and what is the equation for the surface you're integrating over. All right, so this is the function I'm integrating, so that's my t function, and then I'm given here equations of surfaces, and I need to be careful about which of those is actually the surface I'm integrating over. So it says here we're finding average temperature on the portion of the plane. So the plane is the surface S that I'm integrating over, but you know that a plane extends on forever in every direction, so it's not the whole plane, we need a closed and bounded part of that plane. So we are interested in the part of the plane that lies inside this cylinder, so that basically provides a boundary for our region. So you can see that it would be really easy to accidentally think that you are going to be integrating over this cylinder rather than over this plane. So just be really careful as you read these problems that you're clear about what you're integrating over. Okay, so I don't absolutely have to draw a picture of my surface, but it might be a little bit helpful to do that. So I've got an XYZ coordinate system set up here, and my plane that is the surface that I'm integrating over is like a cylinder, so it's missing x in that equation, so that plane will extend parallel to the x-axis. So a quick and easy way to draw that graph of that plane is just to draw the trace in the yz plane, so that would be the line z equals y plus 4, that's the generating curve, and then that plane will extend parallel to the x-axis, so it's a little bit difficult to see because the x-axis and the generating curve kind of line up here, but if I draw extensions on the end of that generating curve parallel to the x-axis, both forward and backward, and then I can draw some copies of my generating curve at the front and the back, get a little sketch of that plane there. Okay, so there is a sketch of my plane, z equals y plus 4, but it's not the whole plane, it's just the portion of the plane that lies inside this cylinder, x squared plus y squared equals 4. So that is pretty straightforward to draw, cylinder of radius 2 centered at the origin that extends up the z-axis. So essentially that cuts off just a portion of that plane, and that little portion that that cylinder cuts off, so think about if you just had a really sharp cylinder that just sliced through that plane, that would cut off that portion of the plane that we're actually going to be integrating over, so there is our surface S. So we are going to think about setting this up, since I have these equations, my equation of my plane given in explicit form, z equals function of x and y, in this case just y, we're going to do this without using a parameterization, we're just going to use the explicit function form, so if you can write the equation of your surface as z equals f of x, y, or x equals f of y, z, or y equals f of x, z, then you can do the surface integral this way. Um, Alright, so I need to think about where I have a one-to-one -one projection of that surface, and since my surface is a plane that goes parallel to the x-axis, really the only place I do not have a one-to-one -one projection is if I project parallel to the x-axis back into the yz plane. If I project that plane back into the yz plane, 
end up just all along that line that was where that generating curve was in the YZ plane. So I don't have a one-to-one -one projection into the YZ plane. I do into the XZ plane and I also do into the XY plane. It's easy to see the one in the XY plane. It will just be this region inside my cylinder. So it's easy to see from this picture the projection of my region down into the XY plane and I do have a one-to-one -one projection there. Every point on my surface corresponds with exactly one point in my RXY. There are no two points on my surface that end up at the same point down in my RXY. All right, so there's where I have a one-to-one -one projection. So I'm just going to set up my surface integral using the method for explicit functions and we're going to integrate over this region in the XY plane. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set up the one on the numerator first. So the integral over the surface S of my function t, which is x squared plus y squared plus z squared d sigma. And we decided that we're going to project into the xy plane. So I need my function that I'm going to integrate to be all in terms of x and y. So the x squared and y squared will stay as is. But the z, I'm going to use the equation of my surface. Remember that that's really what these Riemann sums are, is you're plugging in points from the surface into the function. So I'm going to use my equation for my surface, z equals y plus 4, and that's going to go into this equation in place of z. Right? So there is my function that I'm integrating, all in terms of x and y. And then I need my d sigma. So remember for the explicit form, we had these partial derivatives squared plus 1, the sum of all those things inside the radical, and then dA. We're going to integrate over that region R in the xy plane. And what goes in these two parentheses here are some partial derivatives. Those come from the equation of my surface, del z del x and del z del y from the equation of my surface. And so again, those partial derivatives are going to come from your surface because this differential represents surface area differential. And you need to just take those partial derivatives with respect to whatever plane you're projecting into is an easy way to kind of pay attention to that pattern there. All right, so my equation of my surface, z equals y plus 4. My del z del x will be 0 since there's no x in that equation. And del z del y will be 1. Okay, so at this point, now I'm ready to just do a double integral. And so maybe you want to go ahead and draw your region that you're going to do your double integral over in just two dimensions here. So this is my region Rxy just in the xy plane, and that's going to be a circle of radius 2 because that corresponds to all those points that are inside that cylinder of radius 2. Okay, so at this point, you should look at this integral and you might think about, can I just write down the answer? to this double integral. For this one, you probably cannot. Uh, and then you might think about how do I want to set up this double integral. So do I want to do dx on the inner integral or dy on the inner integral? Or for this one, you should probably say I would like to do polar coordinates. So we'll set that up in polar coordinates and evaluate that. Okay, so I've converted to polar coordinates here. So you can see in place of the x squared plus y squared, I just put r squared in place of the y I put r sine theta, got that whole expression that I'm going to need to simplify. The square root of 2 came from my surface area differential. So conveniently for this problem, that all turned into a constant. Remember that if you end up with variables inside there, integrating variables inside a radical can sometimes be difficult. So that's nice when it turns out simple like that. And then remembering that the dA in polar coordinates is this r dr d theta. All right, so now I need to go ahead and integrate that. You'll probably do a little simplifying. I'm going to just go ahead and write these steps out and then show you what the answer is. Okay, so here's all the work for that integral. Um, so I wrote out all the steps here. You might be able to do some of those steps in your head. But that was just the numerator integral. So that was the surface integral of the temperature function over the surface. And then remember to find the average temperature, I also need to find the surface area of the surface. 
So let me scroll back up and look at that picture a little bit here. So the surface is actually an ellipse. So it's sliced by this circular cylinder, but because the plane that we sliced is tipped, that surface is actually an ellipse. So if you know an area formula for an ellipse and you can find out the lengths of the axes there, you might be able to write down that surface area by using that area for an ellipse formula. But if not, you can also just do the surface integral. So I'm gonna do that for the surface area. And so surface area would just be the double integral over the surface S of all the D sigmas, adding up all the D sigmas there. And so because we already kind of thought through where that projection is and what our D sigma is going to be, we can use our work from our previous problem to do that. And actually at this point, if you pay attention to what's going on, you can actually just go ahead and write down the answer for this one. So this ends up being square root of two times double integral over the region R in the xy plane dA. And that part of the integral there just represents the area of that R xy, which is a circle of radius two centered at the origin. So end up with square root of two times pi times two squared or four square root of two pi. Okay, so I was supposed to find average temperature, so T bar would be the total value of the temperature on the surface divided by the size of the surface, and so I end up with 19, whatever the units of temperature are here. They didn't give us units on this problem. Okay, so pretty straightforward problem. Leverage is a lot of stuff that we've really done all semester long, so really kind of a good way to review at the end of the semester. Uh, we'll look at the next example where we do almost the same problem, but we're going to use a parameterized surface in that next one.